John Joseph is the lead singer of several bands, including the legendary New York hardcore band The Cro-Mags and author of Evolution of a Cro-Magnon, his 2007 autobiography. He's an outspoken vegan and fitness fanatic, which he talks all about in his newest book, Meat is for Pussies, dropping in April 2010. His notorious reputation definitely precedes him, and I was so nervous about meeting him. But the man I encountered today at a little vegan spot in the East Village was warm and funny and completely charming. We talked about food and his new book over a couple glasses of broccoli juice, but of course the first thing I wanted to talk about was his insane workout routine. Right now I'm training for an Ironman, so I try to break up uh, my training and stuff. I go to the gym, I got a rebounder in my house, like today I rebounded and uh, stretched out a little bit and uh, you know, tomorrow I'll go to the gym. I, I got some cycling and some running this week. You know. I got this like urban warfare crow mag training like kind of thing. I mean the gym is cool too in the winter time when it's really freezing here in New York. You can, you know, go, go get on a spin bike or, you know, whatever. But uh, the whole mentality of just sitting there like pumping weights nonstop, like dudes walking around. Like, you know, then you touch them and it's like, you can just like knock them the fuck over. It's like, am I allowed to curse? Yeah. Oh, okay. My first yoga class was back in like 81 at Integral Yoga Institute. The last time I went to a yoga class, it was like, you know, I mean, some of them are good. I just prefer to do stuff on my own. I know a lot of the asanas, so it's like the politics of like getting involved in some yoga school or some martial arts school. It's just like, I'm just not into the whole... People feel they need to lord it over each other and become in a superior position and all this juxtaposing. I'm just, I'm not into that. I'm like, you know, one person was like, excuse me, you're on spot number 33. I'm always on spot number 33. Like, I'm like, I don't really give a fuck, lady. Then she sits there and takes her, I swear to my mother, take, she was like 50 something years old, takes her top off and sits there like next to me with like, no shirt, no nothing. I'm like, yo, yo bugging. <laughs> I don't need to see that. So you got into yoga after you became vegan, vegetarian? No, it was first? a simultaneous thing. And then 30 years later, your new book yeah. coming out. You well, say the name. 30. It's like 28. 20, okay, you say the name now. It's called <laughs> Meat is for Pussies. I'm going to buy it. Okay, maybe I'll give you a copy. You is it for, it. but it says it's a it's a how-to guide for dudes on well, how to get fit. I think there's a lot of good information in there for everybody. But I really wanted to target the male audience because, like, they just have this whole macho attitude, like, Nobody can walk and tell me nothing about what I do. Look at, you know, it's like, this whole mentality's gotta go. It's like, if you think you know everything, then you'll never educate yourself. And, you know, the term is not, has nothing to do with female anatomy or sex or whatever. It's, in New York, yo, we had a saying, yo, don't be a pussy. Like, you know, it's like a New York thing. And I'm a New Yorker born and raised, so when a media to tell me that vegans and vegetarians are skinny pussies and that's where the title came from. Uh, what do I do for, I take, uh, I love Ve uh, Vega sequel. That's, that's what I take a lot of, uh, which is, uh, it's mostly all raw, it's pea and, and hemp protein and nuts and what, I mean, you know, it's the whole protein myth and I even have a chapter in the new book about the protein myth. And the first thing I say when I'm when I say, yo, I'm vegan, they're like, where do you get your protein from? I'm like, you know, where do you get your protein from, dude? I get it from like 20 different sources. Where do you, where do you get yours from? Like, you know, you have to just you have to just really kind of put the knowledge back in the, in the people's faces because it's like they've been taught a certain way to live. But you know, my book is saying, yo, what you being what you've been taught is not necessarily the correct way. So listen listen to what the research says about the numbers of diabetes, the heart disease, the strokes, the erectile dysfunction that everyone's selling all these pills. But yo, 
you know, what does meat do? It clogs your arteries and and, and your veins. And what and, and what what's the schlong? Your main vein. That's why I have a chapter called Meat and Your Meat. It's like however you gotta reach dudes if you gotta hit them over the head or create controversy. Like I like I said, the ends justifies the means. If it if it sparks the dialogue to get people talking about changing what they're eating and their health and changing the environment and the karma of the planet and that's another reason is because you think you could just kill you know 16 billion animals in one country alone and that there's going to be peace on the planet and you know according to the eastern way the eastern thought war is a direct result of slaughtering animals so if you really want peace you have to have peace for all living entities on the face of the earth and to me that in, that includes everything animals unborn babies everything i'm like yo end the killing stop the killing and we can have peace on the planet the meaning of life for me what are human beings put here on earth to do what is the material world you have to suffer birth, death, disease, old age. Even eating raw foods, you're gonna suffer disease. The amount of disease you suffer is dependent upon how you live your life, obviously. I just had a friend my age just die last night of heart disease, Pete Steele from typo negative. So, and I've lost a lot of people to cancer and this and that. You know, and then you have the threefold miseries, Adi Baltic, Adi Atmic, Adi Divic, miseries caused by the demigods, natural disturbances, other living entities, miseries of the body and mind. So the material world is set up and it's designed in a way that you're supposed to strive to get out of the material world. The, the spirit soul is eternal and it's not supposed to be in a temporary physical body. We have a spiritual body as well. So according to the philosophy, and, and I follow the Vedas of India, it says that the goal of human life, which the animals are not concerned with enlightenment and philosophy, they just concerned with eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And this is what, unfortunately, the leaders of the planet are concerned with. So when the leaders of the planet are concerned with simply bodily wants, defending and getting nukes and eating and sleeping in nice beds, and there's no push for real progress of consciousness in the world. And the way it is, it's like war has become, it's like it's nothing. It's like naturally accepted. Yeah, we got another war here and another war there and this and that. But that's the nature of the material world. But the goal of the human being is to get out of the material world. And in order to do that, everything in the world is based on desire. If you have a desire to be a filmmaker, you, you, you follow that desire. You have a, a desire to be a triathlete, you follow that desire. You have a desire to be a teacher, you go to school, you follow that desire. So, you know, your desire has to become, how do I get out of this temporary body? And, and get back to where's the spiritual planets where's the planets where people don't have to suffer you know so that's really what you know Srila Prabhupada who wrote all the Vedas from India you know he said that the material world is like a bathroom a toilet you do your business and you get out you don't hang out and you know although some people do I know you squeeze a chair in over there? No, 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 I'm good. Because I'm going to be like, you know, everything's day. Oh. Well, I'm trying to say I'm short. No, I'm sick. <laughs> I'm extreme. I'm like a Sasquatch. How tall are you? 5'11. Oh, shit, you are. Yay. Oh. <laughs> As we say, breeding stock. Oh, nice, nice. I'm just fucking. <laughs> anyway. Word. Word. Thanks, nice talking to you. Thanks for the interview. We have these beautiful. I don't have wow, any more. She, I, she I housed her. mine. She, she housed it. I need broccoli.